Good morning and welcome back to the channel. I've been wanting to do this for quite some time. I'm going to put the Z7 with the D850 in a landscape photography situation, see what type of results I get. Got a magic sunrise here this morning. I've got basically the Z7 with the 14 to 30 millimeter f4s lens, and I've got the D850 with the 16 to 34, 16 to 35. Sorry. So the sun's just coming up, just starting to get that nice bit of colour underneath the cloud. Let's grab a couple of shots. Now, before I start this, I need to say something. Both these cameras are in exactly the same settings. They're both in manual, both on f11, both ISO 64, and both are shooting at one sixth of a second. Let's get the shots. I'm just trying to make this test as even as I can. So what I've done is I've put the 14 to 30 f4s lens on the Z camera to 18 millimeters. I've done the same over here on the D850 with the 16 to 35. I've put it to 18 millimeters. So I'm shooting both at ISO 64, f11, and both are on one fifth of a second. So basically I've got exactly the same frame with these rocks in the foreground. So with this test, I'm looking for things like dynamic range, as well as I'm gonna look for uh, sharpness in terms of the way these two lenses pit up against each other. But it's a fantastic morning here. I just had the most beautiful colors. The colors are now just dying off a little bit. Okay, so that's our two shots taken. Let's pop back into the studio and see how we went. I don't know about you guys, but as soon as I get back from a vacation, the very first thing I start doing is planning the next one. <laughs> I kind of miss the beach, but anyway, here are our two shots on screen here. The shot on your left-hand side is the D850. The shot on the right is the Z7. So the Z7 is sitting at 14 millimeters. You can tell straight away that it's a little bit wider than the 16 millimeter shot from the D850. When you look at these shots when they're fit to screen, you can hardly see any sort of difference because what I've done is I've exposed for the sky. Now the reason I've done that is because I wanted to test the dynamic range on both these cameras. And we're gonna do that in just a minute. To start with, I just wanted to have a bit of a zoom around the screen. So what I did, let's just go down to the D850. What I did was I focused on this large rock. It's about a third of the way up from the bottom of the screen and you can see that with the D850 already, even though both these cameras have exactly the same settings, it's a little bit more lighter. And you, the way you can tell that is when you look into the clouds, because you look at the cloud definition in the background here over top of this rock wall, you can see on the left there with the D850, the clouds are lighter. Now, one thing that caught my eye when I was looking at that is the rock wall, you can see, and this, is a tribute to the Nikon S-Line range of lenses. The 16 to 35 is no slouch, don't get me wrong, it's a great lens. But that 14 to 30 millimeter, it is sharp. And you can tell the difference by looking over onto the side here where that rock wall is. And there was this little wooden structure out on top of it. You can see with the D850 and the 16 to 35, it's just that tad softer around the edges compared to say, the 14 to 30 millimeter S lens. I mean, that's no secret. You know, the Nikon S line range of lenses are really good. Now I haven't done anything to these shots, by the way, these are raw straight out of the camera. So up on the top there, you can see the vignetting is kind of like, it's a little bit less, I think on the 14 to 30. Now that could be the fact there's an auto setting where it gets rid of some of the vignetting and because of that, I think that's the reason why we're seeing that little tiny bit of less vignetting. It's very hard to spot any differences. I mean, you really have to be pixel peeping and really picky. Let's have a look at the shot that I took where both the lenses were set to 18 millimeters with the same settings. So these are the two shots that I got at 18 millimeters. Now, again, the D850 is on the left of your screen. The Z7 is on the right. 
again, when you look at these shots, you've got to remember that everything is exactly the same. I left the cameras on auto white balance because I really wanted to see the colors that came out of both cameras, both set on auto white balance. With both shots fit to screen, you really can't tell any sort of difference. You press in again and again, you can see that the clouds are better handled by the D850 as well as the rocks down here, the darker rocks. You can see the D850 handles the darks a little bit better than the Z7. So again, not really much difference. The thing is what you're really going to see the difference is when I lift up the shadows in both of these shots and I crush down the highlights. So I push the shadows all the way up to 100, push the highlights all the way down to minus 100. Let's have a look at that now. Basically in the middle of both these lenses, the images are really hard to distinguish in terms of sharpness. When you push over to the sides, however, when you look over onto this rock wall, you can definitely see there's more definition and also more sharpness around this rock wall edge. You can see the difference between this little wooden structure on top of this rock wall here. The Z7 is much sharper. Look at that rock wall and look at the difference between the D850 on the left and the Z7 on the right. You can see when I've pushed up the shadows and you can really see each rock defined on that rock wall. Now remember here, all I've done to these shots is I have lifted up the shadows and pushed down the highlights. Nothing else, I haven't adjusted any colors, I haven't adjusted any sort of vignetting. The one thing that stood out the most to me is that the Z7 has that kind of coolish temperature to its shots. I don't really see that as a problem because if you're shooting in RAW and when you're editing in Photoshop and Lightroom, shots can be brought up a little bit warmer in like a matter of seconds by just pushing a slider on the color temperature. But when you're talking about shots that are coming straight out of the camera, if you look up at the clouds here, look at the difference between the D850 on the left and the Z7 on the right. I think the D850 has that more of a true to life color straight out of the camera. So that's the clouds, but the other thing where you'll see that, and there's evidence, is if you come down to the bottom and you'll see the sand. Like, look at the sand difference. I think the sand is more of a realistic color from the D850 here on the left. In terms of sharpness, look, honestly, you would have to be so picky. Like on the rock wall, yeah, you can see there's a little bit more definition compared to the D850 16 to 35. But still, the D850 with the 16 to 35 takes phenomenal shots. That's why I've still kept it. It's a fantastic camera. You can see that the D850 just handles those darks a little bit better than the Z7. Um, and then if you look up into the top corner here, again, same thing. I think the colors are better out of the D850 and it handles those darks just that little bit better than the Z7. So the takeaway from this test I found is that the D850 shoots more of those true to life colors coming straight out of the camera set at auto white balance. Whereas the Z7 has that slightly cooler tinge to the images. The Z lens that I was using, I think made the difference in that it's got sharper definition around certain parts of the frame. So that's what the images look like out of both the cameras. And just looking at this, it kind of makes me want to go back. In fact, let's finish the video back at location. Well, there were some interesting results there, wasn't there? But look, at the end of the day, both those cameras, that's the reason why I own both. Both of them are phenomenal cameras. They're both 45 megapixel. They're both brilliant at doing landscape photography. Obviously, the D850 is a little bit heavier. That's why I've got the Z7 when I'm going on those longer hikes. I can refer to that camera. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Never stop creating and I'll see you next time.